Okay, Higher Algebra students here with a little algebra review here. Uh, quick little two lesson unit here. Um, talking first of all about slope of a line and writing some of the uh, solving for y and graphing them a little bit here in lesson two. So jump right into it here. Um, again, for slope. Uh, um, it's denoted by this uh, letter M oftentimes, and, and the rise is a change in the Y's on a graph, okay? So the Y is going up and down, the X is going left and right again. So the rise over run would be the change in the rise, which is a Y2 minus Y1, which you probably remember from your uh, previous algebra classes. And then X2 minus X1 would be the, uh, would be the run. Now, doesn't really matter which ones are the twos and which ones are the ones. What you just have to be consistent about is is the the twos should be the same point on the graph, um, and the ones should be the same point on the graph. And so you just have to be mindful that you have that set up, um, and you don't cross them. So for instance, take the y value from one point, and right below it is the x value from a different point. So um, keep that in mind. And here we go. Um, so a positive slope, again, is going to be where the rise, as we're going left to right, the rise is going up. Um, negative slope would be the rise is going down. So obviously it's more of a fall rather than a rise. Um, so keep that in mind that, that uh, positive slopes, if, if, you're, if you write a slope and it's negative, but your picture looks like this, that would be problematic and vice versa if you write a slope that's um that is positive but your your picture looks like this then of course that would be problematic um so if we look at this picture here we've got a, a few points here um we'll just look at the stars on this one um so we look at for instance going through these three stars right here um that should be a negative slope um we've got the points if you look at the the scales here this is the point two eight this is the point eight six. This is the point fourteen four. And again, it doesn't matter which two points you pick, as long as they're all on the same line. You you pick two that that look easier for the math, and and you may find here that easier for the math means that you're going to stay with the smaller numbers, and not use the biggest one. So I would just right here label this x one y one, and x two y two. And again, I chose the bigger point, uh, the eight, six, um, I shouldn't say bigger point, but the bigger X value here, um, to be my, uh, X two. Um, but again, doesn't really matter. And well, I'll show you that here in a moment. So when you look at this Y two for slope here, Y two minus Y one over X two minus X one, that here is equal to six minus eight. Okay, that's our y2 minus y1 is 6 minus 8 over 8 minus 2, which is our x2 and our x1. So that gives us a negative 2 over 6 or negative 1 third slope. Now, had I gone the other way with this and made this uh, an x2, y2 here and an x1, y1 here, excuse me, x1, y1, that wouldn't have really mattered. It just would have led me to 8 minus 6 over, uh, again, y2 um, right here. y2 minus y1 was 8 minus 6. And then x2 minus x1 would be 2 minus 8. So that gives us a 2 over a negative 6. Well, 2 over negative 6 is also just a 1 over negative 3 or negative one third. So it doesn't matter. Um, obviously I wanna make sure I have a negative slope since this line is going downhill. Um, so the slope of that line would be negative one third. Now I could also have here something like this where I have this line here going through those two points or, or even a vertical line or a horizontal line. And these are all going to lead you to different slopes um, a horizontal line would be a slope of zero. 
vertical, which we'll talk about shortly. This vertical line is actually a slope of infinity. And then this is a positive slope here. Um, but we'll leave it at the, at the one third for now. Now, um, when we're talking about the y-intercept now, you do have to be mindful, and I'm going to just actually erase a little bit here around this part, um, and look at, okay, the y-intercept value, if we were to continue going back at this rate, okay, um, keep in mind that we are going up one over three as we go backward. Um, that's the idea of a negative one-third slope. Um, so as we're going up one over three and up one over three, well now, the next point up one over three would be right here. So our, our intercept is not actually a whole number. Um, it's actually two thirds of the way between eight and nine. Um, so our slope here ends up being 8.6 repeating. Now again, this is this is a little more complicated right here. Um, you won't, you can, we have ways that you will find that a little more easy, easily moving forward. But um, just looking at this line here for what the y-intercept would be is if we are going up one and over three, that means by the time we've gone over two, we've gone two thirds of the one that we're supposed to go up when we go backward there. So, um, so that's our, our y-intercept. And then as we expand it even more, how do you make the line end? Well, the line is either going to be indefinite, in which case we would continue to draw this with arrows, okay? Um, or if it does actually stop, then we'll put just a little um, knob of sorts at the end, and it would just look like something like this if it, if it actually did terminate or stop. You would just have a little ball at the end like that. Um, but most lines that we draw in these graphs do have arrows that, that show that signify that the line goes on forever. Um, so again, big thing here is slope, and we'll talk about that just a little bit more here moving forward. Um, we have really two forms of an equation here. And what you're going to find is that when we were trying to solve for intercept, it actually is helpful to start in this point slope form and then solve for that value rather than having to try and use the graph and recognize that we're two thirds of the way up or something like that. Um, and so we've, we, a lot of times we'll start in point slope and end in your traditional MX plus B that you're used to, to dealing with uh, from past algebra classes most likely. Um, and so let's, let's take a look at this. Now, keep in mind, it, if you are given a slope and an intercept, then you just jump right to your clean y equals mx plus b uh, equation where you have m is the slope, you have y, uh, excuse me, b is the y-intercept, so it's right there for you already. Versus this one here, this is if you are given the slope and a point, then you can solve your way, or eventually you'll be in classes where they actually want you to leave it like that. Um, they actually prefer it to not be quite as clean because you can still see the point then and, and so forth. But... Uh, um, but we'll look at that here on this next slide. So here we have a situation where we've got our slope. So this is M. Um, we've got our Y-intercept here. So the Y-intercept is given to us. So the Y-intercept here, it's telling us that the Y-intercept is in fact seven. Okay, so we have this axis and it tells us that the point zero seven is on the graph. So what they're saying there is this is B. So y equals mx plus b here would just be y equals 1 half x plus 7, okay? Because slope was there, so that's your m, okay? And because it gives us the point with the x being 0, that means it's giving us the y-intercept, okay? Um, if the point is 0, then the y-intercept is just what the y-value is, which in this case is 7. So there's our equation. Now down here... On the second one, we do get the slope, so we get m, but we get a point. And so going back to that previous slide where this was the slope-intercept equation, now it's time to use the point-slope equation. As you can tell, they're not just clever names. They're telling us basically which one we use if we uh, get a slope and an intercept versus if we get a slope and a point. Um, so this, again, was y minus y1 equals m and then x minus x1. So we're just going to fill it in. So 
the, the point they give us, we will just call x1, y1. So we would have y minus a negative 1. Again, the y1 was negative 1, but it starts out as a minus, so you have to be careful with that. Um, that if you get a point that, act, that has a negative, it actually turns out to be a plus. Um, and then slope, which is negative 3 fourths here. And then x minus x1, which was 2, so this actually stays a minus. Okay, So this equation here would be y plus 1 equals negative 3 fourths and then x minus 2. And I'm not going to solve for y here yet because, again, it is okay to leave an answer like this. We will solve for y uh, in the next, e next lesson. Um, but what you would do here if you were to solve for y is you would distribute the slope right here and then subtract 1 from both sides to get this plus 1 over. Okay, um, But again, it's, uh, you will encounter situations moving forward where this is the answer that is coveted. Okay, It, it doesn't always need to end up being y equals. It's okay to leave that point like that. So, um, so that would be the point slope form. Now, just to, to conclude here, um, what we are going to encounter a lot is, is times where you have just intersecting lines where one of them is going to be a positive slope and one of them is going to be a negative slope. Okay, You will encounter perpendicular lines, which means there's a right angle right there. And in those cases, the, the slope is the opposite reciprocal. Now, the way it's drawn, again, this is actually an infinite slope and this is a zero slope. But if it was a right angle where they were going diagonal, something like this, this slope might be um, four-fifths. Okay, If that slope was four-fifths, then opp opposite reciprocal means that this slope would be negative five-fourths, okay? So again, opposite reciprocal means if it's x over, uh, I'll use different letters to not confuse us with the um, with the slope formula here. Um, let's go with, if it's a over b, then the opposite reciprocal would be negative b over a, okay? So you can see that this was a over b here was 4 over 5, and so it turns to negative 5 4. So that would be the perpendicular slope in that situation. And then parallel lines, of course, have the same slope. The way they're drawn here, both of them have a slope of 0. But they could both have a slope of 2 thirds or of negative 5 halves or whatever it happens to be. Um, so when we look at, for instance, this example right here, write an, write an equation for a line parallel to this one. Okay that goes to this point. Well, what that tells us is, since it's parallel, the slope is going to be the same. So m is 5, 6, and then it gives us a point. And again, if it gives us a point, then we look at this as the point slope, and this is x1, y1. So again, the point slope formula looks like this, and we just fill it in. So that would be a y minus 8, equals the slope, which is 5, 6, and then x minus a negative 1, which of course is x plus 1, okay? And, and with point slope, again, you can leave it just like that. We could distribute the 5, 6 and add 8 to both sides eventually, but for right now, it's fine to just leave it in that format, okay? Um, and again, that started with parallel and with the same slope idea there. Um, Second one here, write an equation for a line with a y-intercept of 2. Okay, so again, it's written as a coordinate, but the x is 0, which means we're talking about the y-intercept at 2 here. Okay, so we've got b equals 2, and it needs to be perpendicular to this line. Well, this line is in point-slope form, so we, we'd have to do some work to find the intercept, but we don't need the intercept. We've got it already. Um, for the new line, we just need to look at the slope. So the slope here was four, but we needed perpendicular. And again, perpendicular is this opposite reciprocal up here. Okay, so in order to be perpendicular, if the slope here is four over one, then the slope of the line perpendicular would be not just one over four, but negative 1 over 4, which goes back to that negative reciprocal or opposite reciprocal idea. Um, if the slope had started out negative, 
now it would be positive. Um, it started out positive, so now it's negative. Okay. Um, again, the only exceptions to that are when you have slopes of zero and infinity. Um, otherwise, you're always going to have a positive and a negative when you're looking at perpendicular slopes. So our new slope here, or m, is negative one fourth. So we can write the equation. And again, we've got m and b, so we're going to write slope intercept form now. We don't have a point this time um, because they gave us the y intercept. So this would be negative one fourth x plus two. Okay? And there's our final answer. Again, the slope was determined by the perpendicular to a slope of 4, and the intercept was determined by the point given to us there. So in those examples, you see both formats of the equation, both point slope and slope intercept. Okay, this was point slope and this was slope intercept. And you see the parallel and perpendicular rules. Um, so that's that takes care of a little bit with slope and a little bit of writing equations. We'll expand on that in the second lesson, but as always, if you have any questions, please ask, and uh, uh, please give this a shot on the assignment. Thank you.